There's one thing in this world that I don't want you to be. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how all of the limitations that you place on yourself, all of the things that you think are real, are completely optional. All of your limitations are op optional. And I'm gonna start off with a story. Uh, back in 1954, and before 1954, for all of human history, I guess until you know time came in and people started recording time, they thought it was impossible for someone to run a mile in under four minutes. So years and years and years and years and years, people have been running miles. No person had ever made it under four minutes. They thought it was literally impossible, physically impossible. Uh, there were actually doctors that came out and said that a human heart would actually explode if somebody were to push themselves hard enough to run a mile in under four minutes. So nobody did. Why? Because there were all these people that were in white coats that were supposedly quote unquote professionals. They were the doctors. They were the ones that quote unquote know it all. So of course we can't do it. And then so what happens, someone comes out and says something and the mass amount of people in the world go, okay, I believe that. And this limitation was placed on all of mankind that actually paid attention to it. Everybody thought that it was impossible, except for one person. There's a guy named Roger Bannister. And in 1954, Roger Bannister ran a mile in three minutes, 59.4 seconds. The first person ever recorded to run a mile in under four minutes. And what did he do? He showed everybody that running a mile under four minutes was possible. And once people saw it was possible, they stopped limiting themselves. So they went, oh, this is possible. That means I can do it. Here's the craziest part about it. Nobody had ever been recorded running a mile under four minutes because they thought it was physically impossible. The human heart would explode. It was not going to happen. So why would they even try, right? Within two years of Roger Bannister breaking the record and running a mile under four minutes, 300 people ran a mile in under four minutes. Now, let me ask you a question. Was it in those two years that Roger Bannister ran the four minute, four minute mile, that humans just magically evolved? They became a, a great species. They came, became more superior, they became faster, they became stronger, their, their lungs grew to a larger capacity. Did humans change? No. What changed? Their perceived limitations changed. They had the ability the whole time, but the problem was, their belief that it was not possible was the thing that held them back. So think about that for a second. Before I go any further in this podcast episode, how many times have you held yourself back because of perceived limitations? How many times have you believed something simply because somebody in a white coat told you that that was the truth? How many times have you listened to someone who's older than you because they said it was the truth? Right? There's another example. For all of human history, People look up in the skies and they'd see birds flying and they're like, I wish that humans could fly. And that was impossible until the Wright brothers proved them wrong. People thought that putting a man in space was impossible until the Russian people put their very first person in space in 1961. People said that it was impossible to land on that big old thing called the moon until 1969 when Neil Armstrong proved them wrong. And you're telling me that in 1969, we successfully sent a rocket ship 238,900 miles away to a rock that's orbiting the Earth at approximately 2,288 miles per hour and then got them to take off from that freaking moon and land back on the Earth safely with something that literally their technology was nowhere near what you carry in your pocket and you can't accomplish your dreams? Really? Does that make sense to you either? Because in my head, that doesn't make any sense. What do all of the, the four minute mile, the Wright brothers, Russia, Neil Armstrong, what do all of those have in common? One thing, they were impossible. They were impossible. And they were only impossible until they were done. And then once they were done, what happened? People clicked over and they went, oh my God, this thing is possible. So I've got a question for you. What is holding you back from following the life that you really want? 
What are the limitations, the glass ceilings, the perceived limitations that you're placing on yourself the same way that every one of those was a perceived limitation. It's just they hadn't figured it out yet, right? The four minute mile, perceived limitation. That perceived limitation was people saying that it was impossible, physically impossible for a human to do it until, oh, actually it's not physically impossible. We were wrong. It's physically impossible going to space. Oh, we were wrong. It's physically impossible to get to the moon. Oh, we were wrong. Right? How many times have things, people been, oh, we were wrong. What is the, oh, we were wrong that still exists in your world right now? What are you telling yourself that is not possible? What limits are you placing on yourself that are completely false? What is the false narrative, the conversation that you're having in your head that you're telling yourself all day long as to why you can't create the business that you want to, as to why you can't create the family that you want to, as to why you can't create the business that you want to, as to why you can't be a successful artist. What is it? What are you afraid of? What's holding you back? What are the perceived limitations that you're placing on yourself? Is it the fear of success? Are you afraid of what would happen if I were to succeed at such a high level, what would be required of me? Because with success becomes, you know, I, there's so many things I have to do. So many people are afraid of the fear of success. Is it the fear of failure? As to what if I, what if I go after this thing that I really want and it doesn't work out? What if I go after this thing and people make fun of me when I fall on my face? Is it the fear of uncertainty? As I don't know what's out there in the world, I don't know what's gonna happen to me when I go for this thing? Is it the fear of making a mistake? Is it the fear of other people's judgment? Is it the fear of other people's opinions? Is it the fear of disappointing somebody else? Is it the fear of stepping out and following your dream and creating this dream business because you don't want your parents to come back at you and say, hey, why the hell would you do that? We spent $60,000 for you to get your engineering degree. What is it? Are you afraid of disappointing yourself? Are you afraid to bring your light into the world because you feel like you're so afraid? You know this potential that you have inside of you, but if you were to bring this potential to the world, it would scare the shit out of you because you don't know what it looks like to play big and you only know what it looks like to play small. Are you making things up in your head? Are you taking the safe route? What is it that you're doing? Are your dreams so big and so vast that it paralyzes you thinking of all of the things that you must do in order to get that? What is it? Are you making up your limiting, are you making up your limiting beliefs? Are you making up your excuses? And then once you think of those limiting beliefs and believe and think of those excuses, you're believing them to be truths. You're believing those things to be impossible. Are you saying that you don't have enough money to do that? Are you saying you don't have enough time? Are you saying that you're too lazy? Are you saying that you don't have a car? Are you saying that you didn't grow up in the right part of town? Are you saying that you don't have mentors? Are you saying that you know people from where you're from don't succeed? What is it? What is it? That's, what is the bullshit thing that you keep telling yourself over and over again? What is it? Because it's all false. See, we all have near unlimited ability between us and in us, but we restrict ourselves in the potential that we have because of limitations that we put on ourselves, the excuses that we make up as to why we're not living our dreams so that we can play small, why we can't reach our dreams so that we continue just to sit on the couch and play around on Instagram. Because I'll tell you what, it's a lot easier to sit on the couch and just mess around on Instagram than it is to actually go after your dreams. Why? Because you're gonna fall on your face over and over and over and over again, going for your dreams. But guess what's the beautiful thing about it? You eventually will succeed. The creator of Honda says that success is 99% failure. You only got to succeed once. You've got to look at your limitations and say, yeah, those are false. I can see how false those things are. We have to rise above the limitation. We have to break fear from, free from our fears, from our excuses. When are you going to stop telling yourself that you can't do that? When are you going to stop telling yourself that something, something is completely impossible? Because when we remind ourselves that something's impossible, then we give ourselves an excuse as to why to not go for it. Because once again, it's easier not to go for it. But we remind ourselves that something is possible, that it is within our reach, that it is going to take more of us. Is it going to demand more from us to get there? Absolutely. But are we going to be able to get there? For sure. When it comes down to you, it's always, has always, and will always be in your head. You're not at battle with anybody else. You're not competing against anybody else. You're competing against the person in the mirror. You're competing against the, the eight inches between your two ears. That's all you're competing against, it's you. 
It all comes down to you. It comes down to your beliefs. It comes down to your fears. You are the only thing that's holding you back. Not the government, not your parents, not the degree that you have, not the fact that you should go to college, not the part of town that you grew up in, not the fact that you don't have a car, not the fact that you don't have the money, that you don't have the, you know, that your past is holding you back. It's not your current situation. It's not the fact that, you know, you don't have the right circle of influence. It's you. It's always been you. It will always be you. And the, 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 the second that you realize that you've been externaling, externalizing all of your excuses and you need to internalize them and put them on yourself, you can't blame anything else but yourself anymore. And you go, this is, I'm the one to blame as to why my reality is the way that it is. We need a reprogramming of our minds. It changes with the story that we're telling ourselves. And so I want you to start to think about that. What is it that you're doing that's holding yourself back? There's one thing in this world that I don't want you to be. That's realistic. I don't want you to be realistic. Do you want to know why? Because realistic doesn't exist. Realistic is fully 100% subjective. You make up what is realistic. So that realistic thing, like it's a glass ceiling. And what's interesting is as you work harder, you know, for some people that might be listening, it might be your goal to make $100,000, but that's so unrealistic for where you are right now. And I get it, that's unrealistic. But that, that $100,000 is a glass ceiling. It's not a real limitation, but it's a glass ceiling. Here's what's interesting about it. Once you push yourself and push yourself and push yourself and you don't pay attention to your beliefs. And the beautiful thing about, about the beliefs that you have is you don't have to believe in yourself in order to take action. So if you have this glass ceiling that's saying, not good enough, not good enough, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, but you just work and work and work and work and work and you eventually do it, you break through that glass ceiling, what happens? You create a new glass ceiling and you go, oh, shit, I just made over $100,000 you probably won't make less than 100,000 again. Why? Because you now have a new belief of what is quote unquote realistic for you. So the last thing I want you to do is be realistic because there's no such thing as realistic. A four minute mile once wasn't realistic. Going to the moon wasn't realistic. All of those things weren't realistic. You know, if you were to go back 200 years and be like, I'm gonna, you know, one day people are gonna land on that thing up in the sky. People 200 years ago would be like, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Why? because back then it wasn't realistic. Why? Because it had never happened. So you have to realize all your limitations are put on yourself by you, no one else. So I want to leave you with a couple questions to help you kind of dive into this and to get a little bit deeper into this. So I want you to jot this down get a pen and paper real quick. Write this question down. What limitations are you placing on yourself? What are they? What are the limitations that you're placing on yourself? Write them all down. There might be four, there might be five, there might be 200, I don't know what they are. What are they? Next question I want you to ask yourself is this. Why are those limitations false? So instead of looking at the limitations and believing them as limitations, let's flip it on its head. Now that I'm looking at those limitations, why are those limitations false? Maybe someone's like, oh yeah, I can't be successful because of where I grew up, right? And you can say, why, are the, why is that limitation? Why is that belief false? Well, because I'm sure there's other people in the world who have come from the part of town that I'm in or something equivalent to it and succeeded. And if somebody else has done it, that means I can do it. If Roger Bannister can run a four minute mile, I can too. A few hundred people realized that two years after he had ran the mile, right? So why are your limitations false? Why are they not true? And then last but not least, the last question is how can I overcome these limitations? What do I need to do? What actions do I need to take? What systems do I need to set in place? What habits do I need to create? What life do I need to create? How do I need to change my environment around me so that I can overcome these limitations as often as possible? Maybe I set up some sort of way where whenever I start thinking about this limitation, what do I do? I have something else that I do instead. And I develop a system, a routine, a habit, action, something that I need to do to get myself past the limitations. Because none of those limitations are real. They never happen. They never will be. The only thing that holds you back from creating the life that you want to is you. It always has been. It always will be. But the beautiful thing about that as well, the only thing that will propel you forward into creating the life that you want to is you. So you can either look at your limitations or you can look at your opportunities. But the choice is yours. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. And so if you're telling yourself, oh yeah, but I'm just a perfectionist, you're full of shit. You are. Failing at something is better than doing nothing.